Hmm. How do I make a movie about science? Captain's Log, November 9th, 2017 AD. Only 432,000 seconds remain until this project is due, and I realize brainstorming isn't one of my strengths. Oh, I just got an idea. I do something on electronics. I mean, I took it in high school. Dang, I didn't learn anything, though. How about aerodynamics? Wright Brothers lasted only like 59 seconds in the air. I'll make a paper plane that flies longer than that. How hard can it be? Dang, that didn't work out too well. Ooh, rockets are cool. Nah, too soon. We don't want to give North Korea any ideas. All right, it's time to stop playing. Science can be found in everyday objects. It's time to aim for the stars like Galileo and drop some knowledge. DJ, give me a beat. We're gonna go through some random everyday objects. Pocket calculator. You know that big ass computer NASA used back in the 60s? Well, this calculator got more power than that, and it can fit in the back of your pocket. Next up, what we got here? Take a look at this as an abacus. First calculator ever. Read somewhere it existed before the Arabic numeric system. Top beat is worth five, bottom beat worth one. So each column can be manipulated to read any number from one through nine. Eh, no one's probably interested in this because they ain't got Wi-Fi. Relic VHS tape. Streaming online services kill video rental stores. There are like only two of them left. Both of them are in Alaska. Ah, uh, cassette tape. I'll show you some low-tech repair right here. You had to do this every time your player hit the tape. Talk about kicking it old school. Got a one gigabyte USB flash drive. What else we got in here? Oh snap, you got some floppy disks. Too bad each of them only hold 1.44 megabytes. You need like 694 of these floppy disks to equal one flash drive. Rubik's Cube. Genius mechanical engineering design. Two handles counter-rotate around the blade which allows a quick opening. Genius. Go, go, gadget light. Man, thing don't work. Let's see what's wrong here. Take a look, open this up. Ah, this thing's actually missing the battery. Well, I'm gonna show you a quick life hack right here. All you need is continuity. Circuit is open without a battery. What will work if you don't have a battery? So, take a look at this. Let there be light. So I did learn something from electronics class after all. 2G cell phone. This thing don't even get service no more because everything now runs on 3G. Providers had to drop 2G service because there's only so much bandwidth to go around. Hey, speaking of RF frequencies, radio frequencies, you know this cylinder thing right here on your laptop charger? It actually protects electronic devices from RF interference. It keeps your laptop running properly. You know it wouldn't be a science video if I didn't mention the environment. It takes 2.4% of a tree to make a book. Also, to make things even more crazier, the world's demand for toilet paper kills 27,000 trees a day. Okay, well let's go outside. I remember my third grade teacher told me that the sky is blue because it's the color that scatters the most from sunlight. You know, it's no secret that food nowadays has scandalous chemicals in it. We should be able to find something crazy in here. And why is it not open? Ah, push. Last time this happened, someone asked if I went to Midvale School for the Gifted. Oh, and I gotta be careful in here. I can't show any branding. Look at all the ingredients in these mints. Damn, you can barely pronounce any of these chemicals. Carboxymethylcellulose. Oh lord, some kid in spelling bee just fainted trying to spell that word. Look, phosphoric acid and dicola. You can clean a penny or remove oxidation with this stuff. I remember my chemistry teacher told us to never make phosphoric acid with chlorine. But you know what, let's end this thing with a bang. I'll show you a different cool combination. Carbon dioxide and dicola plus those nucleation sites on the surface of mints. 